So we're looking at a John Deere Z335E this morning. The customer brought it in and said that the unit wouldn't start after it was having some issues. Seemed like it was losing power and stuff like that. So uh, we actually were able to fire it up and pull it onto the table here. So uh, we do know that it's getting some fuel. Um, it didn't sound real great, that's for sure, though. It's got the John Deere Ready Start 20 horse V-Twin on it. Uh, Briggs and Stratton V-Twin. Uh, they're not without their issues, but pretty strong engine most of the time. I'll show you kind of what it's doing here real quick. Now with this ready start, it did seem like it was, now that's basically the chokes controlled uh, off of a thermostat and a fan off that runs off the flywheel. So uh, kind of a weird system. Um, I don't like it a whole lot, but it is something that does work. Well, let's see here, parking brake. Apparently when we pulled it up, we didn't set the parking brake again. Well, that don't sound real hot. Okay, interesting. Uh, seemed to run okay when it was brought up here. That was uh, last night when we brought it up. Thought it looked like there was a crack in the breather tube here for the pulse line on the fuel pump, but there isn't. When this thing ran in, it sounded quite a bit different than that, so I'm not sure exactly what's happening at this point, but the... Uh, fuel supply is good. We've got a solid supply to it. I do know that because it ran in here yesterday anyway. Don't know really the quality of the fuel at this point, but I'm going to skip that because it definitely sounds like on that side there's some good popping going on. Um, we're going to start. What I would do first off, if you're doing this and you're not exactly sure what your unit's doing, start off with checking your fuel supply from your tank. Now you can take it off here. Uh, see if you get fuel, you know, to it, or you can take it off here and, and pump it into something. Just make sure you're getting a good fuel supply from the tank. We know that because the unit started and ran when we pulled it in. Now, if your unit's shutting off after, you know, 10, 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour, you want to check for restrictions in this line. A lot of times you'll get uh, the fuel line will collapse on itself or you'll get a restriction at the elbow where it actually goes into the tank. And that'll cause you a lot of issues uh, with with running. So it'll seem to run fine for a while and then kind of kind of lose power and peter on out. Kind of what this thing is sounding like here uh, as far as the diagnosis. But we know that's not the case again because we just pulled this thing in last night and it ran halfway decent. I didn't hear anything on that side sounding like that when we were pulling it in. Otherwise, we probably would have just drug it in uh, as opposed to driving it up on here. Now, if you're getting good fuel supply and your unit will, you know, just start for a few seconds and then die, uh, something like that, could be the quality of the fuel, could also be the carburetor's dirty. You got your carburetor right down through here. Um, a lot of times the solenoid on the bottom, which you can kind of see right there, it's got the two wires going to it. It will be to the point where it is not working properly. Now, when you turn the key on, you should hear an audible click. Now I can hear that there. I don't know if you can on the video or not. That's me turning the key on and off. If you're not hearing that quick, a lot of times that means that the solenoid is bad. Uh, that or it's not getting voltage to it. You can test the voltage to the two wires coming. If you're not getting 12 volts plus, you know that uh, you're not getting good voltage to it. If you are getting good voltage, you're not getting that quick. You can take it apart. Sometimes it'll be just gummed up um otherwise you know the solenoid will need replaced at different points too so uh at this point we know that we're getting spark from somewhere i'm not sure where uh what i would do next is go ahead and check the spark on both sides now i don't really want to turn this thing over much because of the way it sounded like on that side i would think that both of these are probably getting good spark at this point before we do much more investigation we're going to go ahead and open that uh valve cover up on this side and see exactly what is going on but uh if, if you're testing this at home you can test both spark plugs uh we've got the spark checker just turn it over it gives you a low okay or high reading if you don't have one of these you can take the spark plug out with a 16 millimeter or a 5 8 and you can take that out and you can hold it against the block while you're turning it over and just see if you're getting spark in between the outside edge of the spark plug and the tip so you should see a good blue spark down in the middle there if you're trying to test it 
as you're holding it against the block anywhere. So, now I haven't been into this one yet. Customer said they did have a brother-in-law or something like that that messed with it at some point. I'm not really sure what the deal is with that, but we're, we're going to find out. So we're going to take the valve cover off just to figure out exactly what's going on. I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like we've got a bent push rod or something is, is what it sounds like over here. Sounds like it's only running on that other cylinder. And I noticed that it had, you know, some loss of power when we were bringing it in or whatever, but I didn't get any of those pops or anything out of it. So I'm going to take the plug out. Just look at it real quick. See, yeah, I mean, the plug doesn't look bad at all. A little bit carboned up, but nothing, nothing horrible. Got to grab a three eighths here real quick. Now on these Briggs and Stratton, um, if you use anything but a three eighths to pull these valve covers off, a lot of times you can strip out the strip out the head there because this is a three eighths bolt. Ten millimeter really doesn't work well. Um, there's certain times when you can use standard and metric, you know, together, and there's other times where it's, it's just not the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I can tell someone's been in this just as I'm pulling it off because there's a Permatex seal, and that Permatex seal here has been broken at some point. It doesn't really look like there's any oil down below or anything where it's been ran like that, but it's hard to tell sometimes. I don't know how long ago it was done or opened or any of that. Customers a lot of times, yeah, I mean, it's... Usually when you take that off, you've got to use a screwdriver to kind of pry in between the valve cover to get the cover to come off and get that uh, sealant to release out of there. So those are just, again, four bolts around the outside edge. Just go ahead and remove those. You can pull that cover off. And that's just if you're getting some bad sounding coming from one side. Now, if you're checking your spark and you're on one side and uh, it says no spark, you know, from there, you're going to check your spark plug. That's a nice, easy thing to do. You usually don't get a bad spark plug, but every now and again, you do. If you're showing low spark, replace the spark plug real quick. Or if you're showing no spark, replace the spark plug real quick. Check again. If you're still getting no spark, you're going to want to go ahead and pull the cowling off because you probably got an issue with one of the uh, ignition coils. Now, you can test these ignition coils pretty easily. You can remove, there's a kill wire on them. Uh, it's just one wire going to a tab on the coil. Now, if you remove that and test the spark again, obviously you don't want to have everything hooked up or anything like that. But if you if you do that without the uh, kill wire hooked up and you're holding it against the block and you're not getting spark, you know that coil is bad. So uh, take a look at that if you're not getting any spark or getting weak spark. But again, start with the spark plug first. It's very rare that that actually happens, but it does definitely happen. So... Uh, I'm not really seeing anything. Well, that's, that is, yeah, that's extremely loose as far as the spacing goes. So that's definitely not good. And there we have it. <laughs> Looks like we've got, yeah, I didn't even see that push rod laying in the bottom when I first opened it. So we've got the push rod for the exhaust, which is the bottom valve on this unit. It's just laying right there in the in the bottom just of the head and our valve up top is extremely loose and our valve at the bottom it looks like yeah so it looks like here you get a little bit closer closer view for us so what we've got is we've got a valve stud that has backed out so this bottom uh, bolt that goes in here that holds the rocker you can see the top one a little bit better where it holds the rocker that's actually backed out so the rocker this piece here on the top it's on the bottom but this piece here on the top that holds the rocker in place that is backed out on the bottom so what we're going to need to do is we're going to remove this rocker stud and see if that's you know sometimes they can strip out and things like that but I'm not sure if that's the case here or not, but it almost looks like whoever messed with it before 
adjusted the valves completely wrong or didn't have them right because I mean that shouldn't be that loose to begin with and it doesn't look like this one at the top is loose at all go ahead and check it real quick no so it is not loose at all so basically we're going to remove this real quick check out these threads make sure everything's good to go if it is all we're going to go ahead and do is reinstall all this and get the valve spacing done like it should and try to fire this thing up Well, I'm watching the threads as they're coming out, and I'm not seeing any any burrs or anything. It wasn't real hard for me to take out or anything like that. I had to guess it just got some extra torque on it because it was trying to push over a hard spot where the valves weren't seated correctly. Gapped way too big. If you're gapped too big, it causes a lot of back pressure on that engine when it's trying to turn over that compression stroke doesn't have room for the low speed compression release on the camshaft to work so see the you know, it does look like well no that's just some sealant or something I thought it looked like there was some threads pulled there for a second or something but there's nothing pulled on this screw I mean this this rocker stud just looks great um, I don't see any issues with any of this besides the fact that it was loose that the push rod was off inside the head and that I mean that that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot of spacing there so these are supposed to be uh four thousandths on the intake six thousandths on the exhaust is the, is the normal there uh, as far as the spacing goes and that's way off so we'll get everything together here real quick and come back show you how to get this problem solved if uh if you have an issue with this or a bent push rod or anything like that with kind of the same issue now a lot of times when these push rods come out or they come loose or anything you'll get one that's bent you can roll this along a flat surface make sure that it is not bent before you proceed with putting everything back together because otherwise it's just going to happen right again okay so we're back i went ahead and got this whole valve cover on the case and they're all cleaned up we're going to end up replacing that after we get this done with a 690971 rocker cover gasket now to clean that all off, uh, the easiest way, what I like to do at least, is start with a razor blade and go ahead and scrape everything off, all the big stuff, all the way around. We just usually throw a towel over the top to keep as much out as you can as you're doing it. After you get the big stuff off with a razor blade, you can go ahead and come back behind with a brass wire brush. Now we like the brass wire brush, it doesn't scratch the aluminum like a metal one would. Just works a little bit better as far as that. Now on these valve cover gaskets, it comes with a um, instructions uh, that says if it didn't originally come with gaskets, uh, use a silicone um, sealant. Uh, it doesn't matter if it came with gaskets or not. It is a little bit different here because it's got a line that kind of helps hold some of the sealant in, I believe. Either way, it's gonna work better using a paper gasket than that um, Permatex stuff. That is, yeah, just extremely difficult in a situation like this. If you wanna adjust the valves or anything like that, you've gotta scrape forever to get this stuff off of both sides. Paper gasket works a lot better for the situation. Now to adjust these, basically we're gonna need a T40. Uh, so we've got that here to adjust them. And then we're gonna need a half inch. You can use a wrench or a socket or whatever. Uh, it'll be a socket when you're going to tighten it back down, but I usually like to use a ratchet to loosen it first off. Now, you will want to, when you're adjusting these, you can take the top cover off here. Now this one, it just kind of pulls off. Sometimes there is a screw that holds it down, depending on how old your unit is. Apparently someone had this off before and never put the screw back in, so it's not there. So it just kind of, the tabs just kind of push in 
and the whole thing lifts off real easy. But what you're going to want to do on this side is you're going to want to come in on the compression stroke and you're going to want to stick something down the spark plug hole. And when you're coming up, you will want to get to a quarter inch past top dead center on that stroke. Now, some people like to go ahead and make sure that one valve is closed and adjust on the other side. On this camshaft, you can do that. Uh, I don't like to do that because I was taught in some applications the low speed compression release could interfere. So I always like to actually do it on the compression stroke. See, we're coming up. Now we're at top dead center there, right as we're at the very top. Now, what they want you to do is go a quarter inch past that. So if you mark this spot, just in any spot here, so if we took a marker and marked this, where we're at, as it goes down, if we mark a quarter inch past that, that's how far we're gonna want the piston to go back in if we're spinning the uh, flywheel clockwise from the top end. Now, they always run counterclockwise, shaft end, which means clockwise if you're at the fan end. So we're a quarter inch past top dead center there. Both of these valves should be released and ready to set. Now this is gonna be uh, five, or I'm sorry, four thousandths on the intake, which is your top valve. And then it's gonna be six thousandths on the exhaust. So we're gonna get those done. And all we're gonna do is put that in here. We've already loosened our nut and we're gonna going to use our star bit to go ahead and crank that down until we get there. Now, I did pay attention as these were both coming off. If these valves aren't coming back all the way to the same point, then you know you have an issue with one of them sticking and that could be the reason for your push rod coming off also. Sometimes these valves will stick in, they won't come back all the way out, the guide or something will be seized up. So you wanna pay good a close, close attention to that uh, before your you know, going further into this and trying to get it uh, fixed up the way we are here. Now I am going to make sure on that top one that it is torqued before we start this. I'm just gonna go ahead and test it here. So it is, so uh, basically your 100 inch pounds is what that's supposed to be torqued to. I've got a, if you've only got a, um, torque wrench that goes to foot pounds you just divide that by 12 so you're about 8.3 8.4 somewhere right in that general area so it's torqued down good now we're going to move this in until our unit is getting tight on there now you want to be able to still move it in and out but you don't want it to be loose when you're using that feeler gauge so keep going keep going we're about right at that spot. If I tighten that up just a hair, should be about perfect. So it's it's not exactly rocket science doing this, you know, we're not going to the moon with this, but you do want it to be nice and tight where it should be. A little bit too tight or a little bit too loose, and you're gonna run into issues. So let's see if I can't get I'm trying to keep a good view for you guys also while I do this. It's kind of not real easy but we're just keeping that uh you want to keep your torque where it's at and you want to go ahead and tighten up your your nut on the back side i'm not sure exactly why i was trying to loosen it there it's an interesting one loosen it while we're trying to tighten it up that's not going to help as much all right so i'm actually going to hold against it in reverse on the torque wrench or the Torx bit I have in there and screw the two together so, so they tighten to one another so it's nice and tight in there it's not easy to push in and out but it is able to push in and out so it's good to go on our intake valve now we're gonna do the ex exhaust valve which is gonna be a six thousand Now this is a 13 millimeter as far as the nut goes. And again, once you've got that kind of tightened down, you can turn your uh, Torx to reverse and you'll tighten against that. So you'll want to reverse with the Torx and tighten with the actual wrench to get them where you want to go. 
Now we're gonna put the push rod back in. I did test this, it is dead on, it's not bent or anything like that, so that's a good sign. Just gonna get that kind of in there and ready at this point. I did go ahead and loosen the nut on this to make it a little easier once I get it in there. Um, it was very, very loose, so I don't know if it backed out at some point or what exactly happened. It didn't seem like it was loose enough to come completely out or not stay in there, but it was loose nonetheless. And that's going to be an 8 millimeter. And when you're reinstalling this um, in here, you want to make sure that the square matches up on the back side, that everything fits exactly how it should. It takes a second here. Why don't I just get my good old quarter inch ratchet until we get real nice and close. Makes it a little bit easier. I'm not going to tighten it down with this. I'm going to go ahead and use that torque wrench as I had before to get it completely tightened down to spec. Now it's going into aluminum so you don't want to so you don't want to over tighten it or you could strip it but you do want it to be tight also. Now you just want to if you if you look down in you want to guide it you want to make sure that it is good as far as where the valves go and it's in the right position. We'll get this guy going. As I'm looking here, get it lined up at the bottom. All right, so it is good. I'm just kind of lining everything up right now, and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten everything down from there. That isn't wanting to sit quite in the right spot that it should. Alright, so I think everything looks pretty well lined up at that point. We'll get this adjusted. It's a little bit tight, no big deal. Again, kind of hard to get in here and, and keep you with a good view, but. So we're gonna back this off just a hair while we tighten it up. All right. Still where we're at here. Still a hair tight. Loosen my nut, loosen my torque a little bit. Now you want to make sure you double check these pretty good as you're doing them. You want them to be nice and tight. Oh yeah, that's about perfect. It fits in there good, nice and tight, not too tight. So basically from there all we're going to do is put our cover back on at this point. Just our four bolts in and then we're going to fire this thing up. Of course we got to put our spark plug back in. But then we're going to fire this thing up and see how it runs. All right, so we went ahead and got our cover and everything back on and good. I guess I need to plug the spark plug wire back in. Okay, spark plug wire in, check. Now I didn't put the cover back on. I guess I could do that real quick just for, just for sake of being completed. All right, back on. Uh, good oil level. Uh, you always want to check that before you're doing anything. Now it's got plenty in it. It's a tiny bit high, but a tiny bit high is perfectly fine. Let's see what happens. It's running.
running just great now everything's good so we got that all fixed up now uh, if you have any issues afterwards with uh, running or anything like that you do want to probably address the carburetor that's the cause of probably nine times out of ten on these things 90 percent is a carburetor related issue as far as running goes now I haven't had many issues with the uh, plastic on these warping yet or anything like that uh, just because it's kind of a different design than the other Briggs with the double barrel carbur carburetors but uh, carburetor issue is a huge thing if you're getting fuel and it's not running right you'll want to address that for sure other than that you know this should tell you everything you need to know if you're having an issue with one side or the other as far as the valves go uh, if a valve's sticking or something like that, sometimes you can free it up with a little bit of oil and it'll work itself out and be just fine. Other times, you know, where I was showing you if they don't come all the way back out, you know, sometimes you can spray it with just a little uh, penetrating oil, um, lightly tap it with a hammer and it'll pop in and pop back out. It'll use that spring tension to work itself back in. A lot of times that only happens once the oil's been low. You don't know what other kind of damage was done, but that's a good way to get it freed back up uh, so you can... You know see what happens from there if you've already got a seized valve guide to run it for a little bit longer with that same seized valve guide to see if it works back in not going to hurt anything that wasn't already hurt so you can try that as a nice little tip uh, make sure both those push rods aren't bent or anything like that everything's tightened up valve cover you'll want to make sure it's tightened to a hundred inch pounds also uh, just so you don't split that gasket you know i showed you the line that was in this one that isn't in the other one if you over torque that you just tighten that all the way down. Sometimes that'll actually split that gasket out in half and then you'll be leaking oil. So pay good a close attention to that. That should give you everything you need to know about getting one of these fixed up. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.